Chapter 4 Blocking the False Expectation Tank Win through integrity rather than exaggeration. Ours is an industry that has acquired a reputation for producing millionaires. As a result, people feel they've somehow failed if they aren't earning $100,000 a month during their first year. Even worse than this false expectation of premature wealth is the notion promulgated by a number of misguided distributors that success in MLM requires no significant effort and no major time investment. The truth is, this is a work industry. Those of us who have achieved high incomes have applied ourselves diligently to succeed, and we have stayed with it for a number of years. Equally wrong is the idea that you need not do anything except send people to a weekly hotel meeting, and the leaders will do all the rest. In those meetings, some leaders have been known to indeed do it all, including signing up your prospects for themselves. This is a home-based industry where rewards are commensurate with effort. In this chapter, we will take a close look at what we call the false expectation tank by exposing and carefully refuting many of the myths used to recruit unwitting distributors. We will replace them with the actual facts about your first-year efforts. An Analogy Imagine the following scenario. Basketball superstar Michael Jordan just happens to be sitting in a coffee shop in Chicago where you and a friend have chosen to eat breakfast. You recognize him immediately, of course, but the last thing you want to do is pester him on a Sunday morning. The table next to him is vacant, so you sit at that one to be near him. As you are sitting down, you notice that Michael's two companions are both in wheelchairs. One of them is a paraplegic, and the other has a metal brace on his leg, probably indicative of multiple sclerosis or some other muscle disease. They are both in their late teens. You sit down with your back to Michael, but you're so close you can hear his dialogue. You don't mean to eavesdrop, but you can't help but overhear the conversation. Jim, Danny... I know you both may not believe me, but many of us in the NBA earn over $30 million a year because we were willing to pay the price of hard work and countless hours of effort. I started practicing when I was your age, and I never stopped believing that one day I'd make the team. You owe it to yourselves to look at this. Michael, you notice out of the corner of your eye, hands one of the boys a piece of paper. The adolescent looks at it closely and exclaims, "'My God, Mr. Jordan!' That's more than my dad made over the past ten years, and he's a doctor. I know, responds Michael, and that's just one month's income. Jimmy, look at this, Danny says as he stretches just as far as he can across the table to hand him the check. Jimmy takes one look at the $2.8 million check and shakes his head in utter disbelief. He's never seen this kind of money and can hardly imagine it's possible to earn so much in one month. As they both continue to stare at the check, Michael then interjects, And you know what, guys? You can do it, too. Why get involved with some menial job when you can get into something with unlimited potential like playing for a pro basketball team? You shake your head and glance back quickly to make sure your eyes have not played tricks on you. Nope, they're both in wheelchairs. He continues, I'm not saying you won't have a tough. We all did. I was actually cut from my high school team, so I understand the pain of failure. But I didn't give up. I practiced and practiced until I could shoot from anywhere on the court and even rip the nets half the time. I've seen you do some remarkable things, Mr. Jordan. Yes, Danny, and you can too. I'm not discounting for a minute the difficulties and challenges you'll both face. But I want you to know that you can do anything that you set your mind to do. You really do have unlimited potential, and don't let the fact that you're both confined to wheelchairs keep you from trying. Make me proud. Work hard, give it everything, and one day you too can live the life you want to live, and I know you'll deserve whatever you earn. Of course, such a scenario could never occur, because Michael Jordan knows good and well that those wheelchair-bound adolescents cannot reach the NBA. Impairments of some kind keep millions of people from having the opportunity to rise to the top of virtually every field of endeavor. Physical, educational, intellectual, and experiential handicaps 
keep most people at the bottom of the traditional corporate pyramids, such as IBM or Coca-Cola. These are the real pyramids in our society, where workers at the bottom are the lowest paid and the first to be let go in times of crisis. While some few move up through the system, no one has a prayer of earning what the man at the top earns, much less of replacing or surpassing him. Yet it is conceivable for virtually anyone to reach the top in MLM, because there is no challenge that can't be overcome. And every word spoken by Michael Jordan in this hypothetical scene could genuinely be addressed to these two physically handicapped young men regarding the network distribution industry. In MLM, even those who are timid, uneducated, or have no track record of success are often encouraged to believe that they can earn a million dollars a year just like so many leaders in this industry. In network marketing, everyone is given the benefit of the doubt and has the possibility of transcending the highest earner in the company. There is nothing to hold you back but the limits imposed by your own mindset. Having said that, we now want to distinguish between the potential of this business and the reality of what it takes to achieve success. While it's true that everybody, regardless of their handicaps, can achieve upside earnings potential in network marketing, we are concerned about leaders who imply that great success in this business is easy. Sometimes, after years of hard effort, all resulting in failure, some people who truly are not cut out for this business continue to be misled that they can still reach the top. There is a place in our industry for everyone, but each will experience success in his or her own way and time, and the level of success can vary immensely. And success need not only be measured in dollars. Some will develop solid, lifelong friendships, and that alone makes it worthwhile. Some introverts will come out of their shells and feel they have gained immeasurably by what this industry has done for them. Others will earn a few hundred dollars a month and be thankful that they have something of value to do, and a little spending money besides. Some impoverished ministers will earn $15,000 as early as their fourth month. Most everyone will experience personal growth through this industry, and unquestionably, that is priceless. What better way to achieve such positive outcomes, all from home at such a low cost? The two of us met each other through this business and later fell in love and married. If you take everything else away from us, that alone would have made our time in network marketing invaluable. There is nothing of greater significance than finding your soulmate. So, by all means, show prospects the inherent potential of this business, but allow all distributors the right to discover their own levels of success. And by success, we mean having worthwhile goals and taking the necessary steps to achieve them. As long as you are taking a step forward, you are successful. Balance Upside Potential with the Realistic Picture Incomes in MLM can become quite dramatic. We believe that anyone who has reasonable self-confidence, enjoys communicating with small groups of people while sitting at home, is coachable, and has a sincere desire to make a difference in people's lives, can potentially earn $100,000 a month. However, it is important to paint a realistic picture of just how much hard work is involved in achieving financial security and time freedom. Too many distributors fail to tell the truth about the necessary effort. A recent advertisement in USA Today offered the following description of an MLM opportunity. No sales, no inventory, no monthly quotas, no personal or group sales volume requirements, no meetings, just call, phone number, to get started. This ad was intentionally misleading. We called the number to check it out and discovered that while no purchases were mandatory, in order to receive full compensation on several levels, substantial sales volumes were required. Here's the question. If a leader is going to advertise in the business section to find other entrepreneurial leaders interested in big money, why imply that no inventory or monthly sales are necessary? That's not only misleading, it's fraud and we believe the Federal Trade Commission and other regulatory agencies are correct to go after such marketers and companies. They deceive innocent people into believing that MLM, like the lottery, is getting something for nothing. 
And in case you think most people are smart enough to avoid such preposterous claims, take a close look at how many men and women bet family food money on a one in ten million chance lottery. Let's examine what is required to earn big incomes. Network marketing income is a direct result of the amount of wholesale products and/or services purchased by those individuals in your organization. Since most families only purchase as much as they need and use, a sizable organization is necessary to provide a large income. Lots of people ordering and using a little bit. Huge organizations are developed by individuals who personally recruit large numbers of frontline distributors and. As capable educators, teach them to duplicate their process. Our industry's leading company built a multi-billion-dollar global empire, one person at a time, over a four-decade period. In essence, MLM is much more a teaching profession than a sales profession. Those who make it to the pinnacle of any company are usually good communicators in a one-on-one -on -one sense. Being able to deliver a speech to a large crowd is absolutely unnecessary. Duplication is what is critical. It doesn't matter how tremendous we are as individuals, but rather how great we are at teaching others to duplicate our system, as you've already read in many of our stories. But we don't want to create false expectations by waving the oversized checks in front of people without also discussing what it honestly takes to earn them. Understating the hard work and perseverance to achieve great success is the most often utilized strategy by those who create false expectations. Most people will quickly see through the false promises in a very short time and then quit. We are irrevocably convinced that the extremely high attrition rate among first-year distributors stems directly from being bashed by the false expectation tank. In this chapter, we'll take time to address many aspects of this problem, including the one that catches so many newcomers to our industry completely unaware: an unrealistic assessment of how much work is required to earn the huge incomes. Misguided belief that this business requires no effort. Consider a hypothetical situation. Steve goes to his first network marketing presentation. And is immediately struck by the exponential growth potential. For the very first time in his life, he realizes the possibility of unlimited income. But here is his problem: even though Steve knows literally hundreds of excellent prospects, he is currently earning one hundred thousand dollars a year in a management position with a software firm, and is spending as much as he makes. So the thought of quitting before he has replaced his income is simply irrational. During the question and answer period of the presentation, Steve asks if he can stay behind and visit with the presenters, Bill and Angela. Of course, they agree to speak with him privately. After everyone is gone, Steve explains his money situation to the successful couple. Instead of telling Steve the truth, namely that he is going to have to work very hard for a year full time. Or perhaps for two or three years part time in order to replace his income, they create false expectations. Bill says, "No problem, Steve. You've got a rolodex full of high caliber prospects, and Angela and I can work those people for you, and then stack them on your front line." Of course, that will never work because Bill and Angela already have their hands full building and maintaining their own front line. They might try, but experience has taught us that no one can do this business for anyone else, and we all know that friends respond best to hearing about a business opportunity from friends first. Then a successful sponsor or upline can reinforce what the curious prospect has learned from his friend. The power of networking is at its highest peak when it is friend telling friend, but Steve cannot possibly know all of that at this stage, having just been introduced to the industry. So to him, it sounds good. Based on what Bill has told him, he signs up, makes a list of his top 200 prospects, and turns it over to his sponsor. The false expectation tank hits Steve hard and fast. It doesn't take very long for him to realize that he is not going to get something for nothing in this business. Even if Bill makes good on his promise and signs up a few quality distributors on Steve's front line. Steve will still have to roll up his sleeves and work extremely hard, or the people beneath him could roll past his pay levels. 
But what ordinarily happens is that Bill can't convince Steve's friends to do something when Steve is not actually approaching them himself. Here's the point. Rarely, if ever, has a person in network marketing had the time and energy to recruit, build, and train more than one large front line. We have not met anyone who has done so. Typically, after half a year of little or no activity, Steve quits. But he doesn't really go away. From that day forward, whenever network marketing is mentioned in his presence, Steve remarks, Yeah, MLM is such a scam. I gave it my best shot for half a year and had a sponsor who was supposedly making big money, but I never saw a penny. There are thousands of Steves out there bad-mouthing our industry because of unrealistic claims that lead to overblown expectations. And unfortunately, there are numerous Bills and Angelas who have been taught to be sifters instead of relationship builders. Their underlying motivation is to simply blast through Steve's Rolodex, hoping to find one winner, instead of helping Steve build a business based on his close relationships with friends. So, what should have been done? Well, Bill and Angela should have been honest about Steve's chances. Not only would Steve have respected them more, but he would have fully understood how much effort it would take to make the business work for him. Here's how it should have been handled. Bill sits down with Steve and looks him squarely in the eye. You know, Steve, I can appreciate your dilemma. I know you still need an income while you grow your business. But if your corporation was to decide to enhance their profit structure by downsizing and you were targeted, they wouldn't even consider keeping you on salary until you found a replacement income. You'd be gone overnight with some severance package designed to placate you but not meet long-term needs. The truth is, in our business... It's only those of us who treat it like a profession who get to the big money. Give it all of your energy and you'll naturally get there sooner. Undertake it part-time and stay with it steadily and you'll get there eventually. But there is no way for you to earn big money by exerting only minimal effort. That is, by simply turning all your prospects over to your sponsor. Steve listens but still doesn't fully understand. He responds, well, how do guys like me do this business? How does anyone ever get to the kind of money I've been hearing about? Steve, it's true that many leaders in our industry earn over $50,000 a month, and most could afford to retire on that income in half a decade. Compared to retirement on a little pension after 40 years in your profession, our offer is very attractive. But I'd be doing you a disservice if I didn't tell you the truth. And the truth is, to hit those numbers, you would have to tighten your belt and do this business full-time. The other option is to work very aggressively part-time until you've replaced your income, and then go full-time. If you decide to do it either way, great. Angela and I will work with you side-by-side side until you reach your goals. Otherwise, let's just sign you up so your family can use our products and services at wholesale prices, and I'll touch base with you again in six months to see if your circumstances have changed. Can you guess what Steve will do? He's going to go home and give this business serious consideration. He has no illusions about how hard he's going to have to work, and, frankly, he respects Bill immensely for his honesty. Bill shot him straight, thereby preventing Steve from being a target of the false expectation tank altogether. He's going to carefully think it through. One, either his future is brighter in network marketing and he is willing to make the gutsy move to live off his savings for six months and give this business his full-time effort. Two, he'll choose to take the precautionary approach and replace his income first by remaining on his job and working the business part-time, which will take substantially longer. Or three, he'll order some products or services at wholesale and become a good customer. If he chooses against all of these options, at least Bill ends up with a great prospect he can call every six months until the time is right, instead of creating an angry distributor who, because of misinformation, now badmouths the entire industry whenever possible. Remember, in the network distribution industry, honesty is everything. Cheat someone at work and eight office workers will hear about it. Cheat someone in our industry, and 200,000 people in 20 countries know about it within a week. And when an upline distributor deceives a downline distributor, it is not easily forgotten or forgiven. 
it is the most detestable offense in our business. Think about it in terms of your own company. Those who are guilty of cheating others are the most despised people. And the sad part is, no matter how many apologies you make, once it is done, you can never recover. Your reputation within the company is irreconcilably damaged. We've seen it happen in several companies, and it is one of the most easily avoidable tragedies of our business. Our industry affords us daily opportunities to discover our true worth. There are countless moments when we are faced with situations that require moral decisions. Each one is a personal test of our integrity, and sometimes no one will know but us. But we are challenged more than anyone in any field of endeavor to raise the standards of human values. This integrity must begin with our very first presentations. Tell the truth about your marketing plan and the tremendous amount of work necessary for success. Offer your support, but never offer to do work for a new distributor that you barely have time to accomplish for yourself. The more honest we are about the hard work in our business, the less attrition we will experience, and the more respect we will build for our industry. Unrealistic Assumption About the Numbers Needed to Succeed Beware of the unrealistic assumption about the number of individuals that you need to personally recruit. Some companies have joined with field distributors in an effort to further the myth that you need not be particularly prolific in sponsoring people in order to prosper. Bunk. While there are exceptions, most successful leaders have had to sign up large numbers on their front line. Most of the truly big-time income earners in the field of network distribution have, over time, personally sponsored at least 100 frontline distributors, and many have sponsored even more. However, there are always some exceptions to this rule, and Michael DiMuccio of Kleinberg, Ontario, is one such example. After struggling for 13 months in one MLM company, Michael found another that had remarkable products with which he could readily identify. This is how he describes his experience after joining the new company. During the initial launch phase, I prospected about 100 people and recruited 26 front line. By placing so much emphasis on the relationship between myself and those 26 recruits, five became long-term business partners. Not everyone who signed was as committed as I was, or, obviously, they would still be with me. Yet their contribution in the beginning added synergy, excitement, and volume that helped produce my personal success story. $126,000 group volume in the opening month that generated about $15,000 in personal income. This success added fuel to the fire, and the momentum continued over the next three months. I didn't recruit for almost a year after this. Instead, I put into place an infrastructure for communications and recruiting, and developed a model that could be duplicated for presenting and training. I went back to work by launching Mexico, where I recruited five new legs and produced around $150,000 in the opening month's sales, almost entirely from a cold market. Six months later, my average income had grown to $20,000 per month. By this point in time, I had recruited perhaps a total of 30 to 35 frontline distributors. I then set my sights on the Quebec market, prospected about 45 people, and recruited five new legs, two of which have reached a monthly income of about $12,000. I then had the good fortune to be referred to a tremendous businessman from Manitoba. Launching his business yielded the highest return yet. Dealing only in a warm market, he recruited 12 of his 13 prospects, four of which exploded in the first month, followed by two more in the next 60 days. His launch generated a record $219,000 in group volume and netted him $17,900 in personal income. As a result, my income rose to an average $40,000 per month. Success breeds success. Now, with relatively little effort, I've sponsored and recruited 12 new legs over the last 18 months, with four of them averaging $2,000 to $8,000 monthly. At the same time, I helped my leaders expand and took my monthly income up to $100,000. Today, at 33 years of age, after nearly six years in the business, I've personally sponsored 60 frontline recruits six of which average a monthly income between $8,000 and $45,000, three take in approximately $2,000 to $4,000 per month, 
and a few more are just getting started. Many people deserve the real recognition for my success, but suffice to say that I've enjoyed an extraordinary career in an incredible profession. Michael was acknowledged as Distributor of the Year by his company for these outstanding achievements. We are currently developing strategies to make stories like this become the wave of the future in network marketing. As these kind of ratios become more attainable in our industry, we will see a flood of new associates joining our ranks over the next decade. Those new to network marketing should have a simple understanding of the four most popular types of compensation plans, the breakaway, the unilevel, the matrix, and the binary. There are other hybrid plans that are a combination of these, but in general these four are the most widespread. Admittedly, the following explanations are a bit oversimplified, but understanding them in depth is not necessary for a first-year distributor. Having a basic grasp of these compensation plans is all you'll need for now. The oldest and most traditional is the breakaway plan. It allows distributors to recruit and be paid on an unlimited number of frontline associates. When leaders emerge by meeting the basic requirements set forth by the company, they break away from their upline executives, thereby forming their own organizations. In a breakaway plan, leaders receive a commission on unlimited levels generated by everyone within their own circle volume, and, based upon the number of breakaway leaders on their front line, they are paid a commission on a designated number of levels of their breakaway groups. Even though a larger percentage is generally paid on the circle volume, the real money is made in the massive numbers generated in the breakaway groups. Since the emphasis in a breakaway plan is placed on numbers of distributors on your front line, it is difficult to mislead new associates about the fact that it takes lots of sign-ups to receive the full benefit of the compensation plan. The unilevel plan essentially pays commissions on a specified number of levels as opposed to generations that can run to depths of 20 or more, as designated by the company. It is comparable to the compensation paid on the circle volume only of the breakaway plan, except that it limits the number of levels. A unilevel formula, of course, has no breakaway system, but it is similar in that the only way to make money is to sponsor significant numbers on your front line, thus increasing the chances for a greater exponential growth. In the breakaway and unilevel plans, each level beneath you grows larger than the levels above. Your sixth level, for example, should ultimately be larger than the five levels above it combined. So the larger your front line, the larger your sixth level will ultimately become. Because the unilevel is not as lucrative as other bonus programs, it is more often used in combination with another plan. Again, it is difficult to mislead anyone about the numbers necessary to succeed with the unilevel plan. The matrix plan is inherently limiting as a compensation plan by its very definition. Let's consider the 3 by 7 matrix as an example. You are on top and have 3 on your front line. Your second level is 9, third is 27, fourth is 81, fifth is 243, sixth is 729, and seventh is 2,187. Your entire organization, if it filled up, would compensate you for a total of 3,279 people. Many leaders have 10 to 100 times that many people in their organizations. It's literally a case of converting an unlimited opportunity into a limited income position. What's worse, it's very difficult for those below you to succeed in this system. Let's pretend that everyone on your seventh level has a sincere desire to succeed in filling up each of their matrix organizations. That would require a company of over two million distributors. The problems now arise because for people to succeed on that seventh level would require recruiting the equivalent of the entire populations of China, the United States, and Germany. Disregarding the reality of the matrix plan, the sales pitch still is... All you have to do is sponsor three, only three. The company literature and the entire sales force then promotes the idea that you can be successful in their venture if you only personally sponsor three others. And that's precisely all that most people end up doing, if that. But what we want you to understand is this. 
Nobody in any company at any time in our industry's history has succeeded in earning the truly big checks after personally sponsoring only three or four people. That is false expectation ad absurdum. If you are working a matrix plan, be prepared to personally recruit enough associates to fill up your first four or five levels. Do that and you'll likely prosper. A matrix plan will only work if you do. The binary plan is the most recent hybrid in the chain of new compensation plans. If you like the matrix, you'll love the original binary. The premise here is that all you need to do is sponsor two frontline individuals who are called your profit centers. Once you've got your two, teach them both to duplicate what you've done and so on until, poof, you're rich. Not in most cases. It may be perfected in the future, but as of the time of this writing, many of the binary plans we've reviewed require distributors to balance the sales volumes of both sides of their organization. And if left on their own, each side tends to grow at radically different paces. Since balanced volumes just don't happen by themselves, distributors need to focus constantly on adding enough quality people to either or both sides in order to keep volumes in balance. Otherwise, distributors are paid only on the lower of the two sides of their binary-shaped organization. We can already hear the shrieks and screams of matrix and binary companies who don't read this chapter carefully, so please be clear on what we are saying before you react. We've met people who are dramatically successful in every kind of compensation plan in existence, and we do not advocate one above the others. Whether in a breakaway, a unilevel, a matrix, or a binary compensation plan, you must personally recruit or play a long-term personal role in the recruitment of a significant number of distributors to be successful. We have heard popular authors and top leaders suggest otherwise. Don't be fooled into believing that you need only sponsor two or three frontline networkers to find your way to unlimited wealth. No matter which compensation plan you choose, Success requires lots of hard work. We do not mean to pass judgment on compensation plans, but rather to caution leaders in a matrix or binary plan against creating false expectations as they present their plan to new prospects. Unrealistic assumptions tend to emerge most often from those plans that limit the number of frontline distributors. Carol Fitzgerald of Dundee, New York, found herself a victim of false expectations with a brand new startup company. She felt doubly deceived because she had networking experience and, in hindsight, felt she should have seen it coming. I had been working part-time with a large network marketing company for about three years while homeschooling two children. I was a distributor with a large, solid nutritional and household product company. I wasn't shattering any records, but for the time I invested each week, I had a nice income, and it had a steady increase each month. My organization was comprised mainly of women who had careers in corporate America, but wanted to be able to stay home with their children while still maintaining an income. All was progressing well until a friend of mine phoned to tell me about some incredible environmental product that I just had to try. I asked if it was a network marketing company, and explained to her that I was really committed to my present organization, and I wasn't interested in working with more than one company. She's very creative and wasn't easily discouraged, as she knew of my current success. My birthday was four days later, and a large box arrived, containing a complete sampling of products and a brief explanation of an unbelievable compensation plan. Now I knew why my friend was so excited. The products were great, and the money offered was staggering. Binary pay plans were brand new. I had been working with a matrix program and didn't know much about binaries. They seemed too good to be true. Why didn't those warning bells go off? This was truly an unbelievable opportunity for fast growth and quick cash. It paid weekly for every $1,000 worth of product sold, with $500 on each leg, $250 was paid out in commissions. Sponsorship didn't matter, there was no limit on depth, and best of all, volume was never lost, but carried over until a balance was achieved. Typically, for this type of plan, distributors were qualified to receive commissions once they had purchased $100 in product 
and sponsored just two other people who did the same. Distributors could personally purchase up to three positions, there was no age limit, and everyone in a household could have their own distributorship. I was hooked. This company had everything. The products truly were revolutionary. They could help the environment, and the money was fantastic. I could help all of my family and friends, who were still friends then. All they had to do was buy $100 worth of these wonderful products, and I could place them in my organization and build under them. I dived in head first. I started with three positions, placing my children, great college fund, below me, followed by my husband, parents, in-laws, grandparents, siblings, and everyone I knew. It didn't matter if they had network marketing experience or not. Anyone could understand this pay plan, and besides, they were helping the environment. Of course, everyone in my group did just what I did. Nearly all of them came in with three positions and encouraged friends and family to do the same. We signed up churches, schools, and other not-for-profit organizations, who in turn rallied all of their supporters. My organization exploded. This was truly what networking was supposed to be. My products arrived the second week. We didn't have distributor kits or training manuals yet, so I wrote materials for my group to use. The company liked my tools, so they used them corporately. I organized conference calls and conducted training sessions. The money was rolling in and everyone was thrilled. Then it happened. Delivery of products started being delayed and checks had mistakes. The principals of the company told me that it was the tremendous growth my group had caused and that it was a good problem to have. I was assured that they were hiring extra staff to clear up the problems. We continued to fax in hundreds and hundreds of applications, but I was concerned enough to start tracking my own organization. I had all of my group fax their applications to me so that I could monitor the growth. I discovered a major discrepancy in what was owed to my people and immediately jumped on a plane armed with my charts. When I arrived, the corporate heads looked at my documentation and were aghast. They had no idea the problem was this severe. They brought their programmers in and decided that they had a programming error and would have to re-enter all of the thousands of applications in order to fix it. Of course, we shouldn't lose momentum, so I was urged to remain positive and keep recruiting. They claimed to have fired the person who was responsible for fouling up product orders, and I was guaranteed that everything would be back on track within two weeks. We kept on recruiting. Even though checks and product orders were sporadic, they seemed to be trying. Then came Black Monday. It started when my mail arrived and I found out that my last two checks had been returned for insufficient funds. The phone started to ring, and people were no longer thrilled. Hundreds of people had all received the same mail, and they all had my phone number. The company phone number had a recorded message saying that it had been disconnected. Reality set in. When I finally reached the president of the company, he explained that this situation was all my fault. It seems that they had never planned on someone completely balancing her organization and, worse yet, teaching everyone to do the same. My balanced group had maxed out the pay plan after only eight levels, and my organization reached more than 30 levels, totaling several thousand distributors. The company closed its doors, teaching me a lesson and giving me a birthday present I'll never forget. Unfortunately, it also left my family and many of my friends with very negative feelings about network marketing that have taken me years to overcome. I still have a copy of my largest uncashable check in my daytimer to remind me that in network marketing, as in any other business, there is no get-rich-quick program unless someone gets hurt. Slow and steady definitely wins the race. Fortunately, Carol was able to pick up the pieces and is now working with an experienced team toward the launch of a network marketing company that she hopes will be a reflection of what our industry is meant to be. Carol adds, For any of my friends who may be reading this, flowers, chocolate, or just a simple card make much nicer birthday presents. The lesson for people just starting out in network marketing is this. Binary plans by themselves tend to reflect a short-term cash return as opposed to a long-term, steady, residual income. If you are considering joining a company that is so new it has no track record, 
at the very least, make certain the principals in the company do have a track, a good one. It is very, very risky to join a company that has not been in existence at least a couple of years. If you feel compelled to join and don't have first hand knowledge of the integrity of those starting up the company, do your due diligence. Check them out, call their references, and if their compensation plan is untested and sounds too good to be true, it probably is. At the very least, call the Direct Selling Association in Washington, D.C., and find out if the company under consideration is a member. If not, watch out. If you are in your first few years in this industry making a decent living with a solid company, and like Carol, an overzealous sponsor shows you big checks or a comp plan too good to be true, hopefully you'll have the common sense to stay where you are. Network marketing is big business played on an international stage offering staggering income potential, enormous amounts of free time, travel, power, and prestige. To hit the big numbers is to be treated like an international rock star playing to large audiences and standing ovations on every continent. You'll be treated to the best cuisine in every location and interact with the most powerful people in industry, medicine, and law. Remember, as you are trying to appeal to various professions in corporate America and throughout the world, each one has its malcontents, and frequently the most successful among them are the players who can relate to these kinds of earnings. As you move from your warm market into your cold market prospects, you need to understand that this is a numbers game and not be intimidated by it. MLM is the great equalizer in which former blue collar workers are allowed to compete with or even bypass, doctors and corporate leaders. Perhaps from the standpoint of workloads and maybe with respect to the number of people you actually have to sponsor, you were falsely induced into MLM, but no one can truly tell you about the joy of earning five or six figure monthly incomes until you yourself experience it. So don't whine, get to work. What's it going to be? Four years or forty? Inaccurate perception about the time needed to succeed. The next problem area, time investment, is certainly worth mentioning because it so often misleads prospective distributors about one of the most important aspects of the business. While we've seen many of our associates reach five figure monthly incomes in only a few months, ourselves included, not many do. We believe new marketers should set realistic objectives ranging from one, two, and three year to five and ten year goals. Then track upline until you find a person in your company who is earning the amount you wish to earn by your tenth year. Ask that person to help you set realistic goals based on the amount of time and effort they were expending at each of these monthly and yearly mileposts. It's quite reasonable to assume that if another person was able to achieve what you desire, if you can visualize yourself doing that too, and if you're willing to put forth the same amount of time and effort, you can earn the same. An average earnings report can and should be issued by your company. The way to set practical goals is to base them on incomes at varying levels actually earned throughout your existing distributor force. Remember to be realistic about the amount of time it will take but also be expansive in determining the right goals for yourself. It is by unleashing your limited thinking that you will be able to rise to your full potential. With respect to the amount of time required to succeed, part-timers in network marketing earn substantially less than do those working the business full-time. If a full-time person is earning $200,000 a month, a new person might quite logically assume that if she works half the time, she could earn $100,000 a month. Not necessarily true. The most Renee ever earned as a serious part-timer, who, because of her elected position to a four-year term in public office, could not quit until she had completed her commitment, was not even 10% of the amount we've earned together working full-time. It's because this is largely a business of duplication. Part-timers attract part-timers. If you are the leader and part-time effort is good enough for you, then part-time will seem appropriate to everyone you recruit. On the other hand, if you are working very aggressively, treating this like big business, so too will more members of your downline. Ask yourself a simple question. 
When was the last time you met a person who became a millionaire in his spare time? Prosperity is a full-time venture. Our book, Power Multi-Level Marketing, is dedicated to teaching how to build a large, dynamic, multi-level marketing organization and the inevitable differences between working part-time and full-time. We have researched numerous companies with respect to average part-time and full-time incomes. You simply cannot accomplish full-time goals on part-time effort. Obviously, those who give this business their all should arrive at their goals more expediently. If this is an option for you, and if you have six months of staying power on the money you have in savings, then we highly encourage you to carefully select your company and give it everything you've got. There has never been a more lucrative time to get involved with this industry, nor has there been better public receptivity to the concept of networking as a viable business. If you believe in yourself, the organization you've joined, your company, and the industry, then simply tell the world of your discovery. That's what Mark did, sometimes putting in 60 to 70 hour weeks on fire with enthusiasm, and within three and a half years, his efforts earned him his first $100,000 monthly check. If responsibilities, financial constraints, doubts, or just good common sense hold you back from beginning this business on a full-time basis, then Rene may be someone for you to emulate. Although only part-time, while serving full-time on the Board of County Commissioners in Reno, Nevada, she treated her network marketing business like a real business. As she explains, I stayed with a constant regimen, prospecting 12 to 15 people every single day, holding a presentation in my home for at least 15 prospects a week, gathered in two to three separate meetings, all of which resulted in my sponsoring a minimum of five people a month. With extra time invested on the weekends, the number of people I sponsored could sometimes run as high as 10. By never letting up, even though I had a busy professional schedule, I reached a $100,000 annual income after one and a half years in the business. Consistency is critical, whether you are approaching 5 or 30 prospects a day. There is nothing wrong with telling people the possibilities in this industry. The true stories are intrinsically strong in themselves. There is no need to exaggerate, but everyone needs to know the amount of productive time and focused effort we invested to accomplish these goals. We weren't attending someone else's meetings. We were conducting our own. We weren't managing our downlines. We were supporting our frontline associates by helping them close their prospects and thus building organizations that duplicated our efforts. Faulty premise that upline will do it all for you. Many new distributors are recruited by being told they need not work hard. All they have to do, they are assured, is send their prospects to an upline's hotel meeting, and their sponsor or upline will do the presentations and close every one for them. But let's get back to the basics. The definition of networking is friends telling friends. But you must be involved talking with your friends, sharing your excitement about this business. Networking is absolutely no different than telling friends about a good movie or a new restaurant you've discovered. You don't have to be an expert. You don't know who directed the movie or where they went on location to film it. You don't know who choreographed it or who wrote the musical score. You may not even remember most of the actors in the movie. All you know is that you loved it. It made you laugh or cry or just feel good. So you tell people. No one expects you to know everything about it. Based on your word, they will probably go see the movie the next time they are in the mood, just because you recommended it. Hearing about it friend to friend is the essence of what makes network marketing an effective method of distribution. But what would you think if a close friend called you and said, Hi, it's me. I've got a lady on the line who introduced me to a new movie last week. We went and saw the movie and liked it so much that we've both called you. I'd like you to speak with her. She's on the line to answer any questions you might have about the movie because she's seen it more times than I have. Get the picture? There is a place for upline support. It comes after they have seen the movie, that is, after they have seen the presentation, when bringing in an authority to help get them involved makes sense. 
Whether you introduce your prospect through an audiovisual business briefing or an in-home presentation, use your upline to add credibility after the initial exposure. You don't have to be an authority on MLM or your company or your products to make the initial introduction. Nor do you have to deliver a polished speech or have your upline on the phone with you. Our experience has been that a little less refinement goes a long way in this business. As you share your enthusiasm about what you've learned, particularly at the presentation, you want people to walk away thinking, I can do that too, not, wow, what a brilliant presenter she was. Stephen Friedberg of Parkland, Florida, learned this lesson by being thrown directly into the fire for his first meeting. Believing that his sponsor was going to do his first meeting for him, Stephen invited several of his friends and encouraged them to bring a friend. Five minutes before the meeting, with 19 people gathered in his living room, Stephen found out that his sponsor couldn't make it. At that point, I came close to having a massive heart attack. I was so scared. I was sweating so much that my glasses fell off my face. I was shaking so hard that, for the life of me, I couldn't draw a straight line on the board. The meeting that was supposed to last an hour took only 19 minutes because I had told them everything I knew. To make matters worse, someone I had already sponsored filled the empty minutes by taking over the floor, shouting to everyone, You can do it! while striding from one end of the room to the other. All I could do was pray that the floor would suddenly open up and swallow me, sparing further embarrassment. It was my worst nightmare. Until the next day. Three people signed up and my business was off and running. Although we do teach sponsors to do the first couple of meetings for their new associates, this story shows what can happen when people are left with no options but to go out and, in the words of the great Nike, just do it. This is a business of teamwork. Don't be misled by the false expectation that somehow your upline is supposed to take you by the hand and do everything for you. But at the same time, the reason we are compensated multi-levels is because, as we plant the seeds with our prospects, our upline mentors are there to water those seeds for us. Then, as your people bring in interested prospects, you are there to help close their people for them. It is not a matter of upline doing it all. It's about all of us doing our parts, making the whole organization function as one healthy body. Remember, you don't need colossal support nearly as much as you need to be a major support for others. When that sinks in, you'll truly begin your march toward wealth. But you will argue, I'm not making the big money yet. It doesn't matter. Most people only need to hear the same thing reinforced the old one-two punch. If the subject comes up, how much are you making? Let them know that you are still in the early building stages, but give them the private number of a specific person in your upline who is making big money. Our experience is that only a small number of them will follow through and call. What they really need to hear is that what they've been told is being accomplished by someone beyond their friend, someone to whom they will also have access. But when they do follow through, the big earner needs to be accessible. Clarification of Retirement The definition of retirement is the total withdrawal or separation of oneself, thereby indicating the end of a career. Have you noticed that the topic of retirement comes up at virtually every opportunity meeting conducted by a leader? This is a false expectation, often promised and seldom realized in network distribution. This business is just too much fun and can even be conducted by telephone from an easy chair. Many of us use the word retirement loosely in our first approach with prospects, but what we mean is that after a certain period of time invested in the business, we can ease up dramatically. At a certain point, we no longer have to spend our lives prospecting people to achieve wealth and independence. But we must find an appropriate means of sustaining our support and accessibility to those who count on us. When any network marketing company allows vesting, retirement without any further production requirements, few distributors choose to actually retire completely. A real leader makes plenty of time for his family, most often creating a lifestyle that blends quality free time with quality work time. But that leader usually continues to be accessible by telephone, 
and never allows the rumor to circulate in his downline that he is fully retired. That could be a mistake and should be avoided. But don't allow this retirement issue to disturb you. Here's why. First, there is no other business in existence that has such universal application but also offers the rewards of network marketing. Not everybody can be an athlete or an actress. Not everyone has the funds to purchase their own franchise. But almost anyone can do network distribution on some meaningful scale. And once it's in your blood, it is nearly impossible to do anything else. Twice we've tried to retire, and both times we've convinced ourselves that no other productive endeavor is nearly as fun. According to the eminent psychiatrist William Glasser, all of us have two fundamental needs in life, the need to give and receive love, and the need to feel worthwhile to ourselves and others. The two times we cut back considerably, we quickly discovered that we missed the interactions with friends and acquaintances we've made through our business. We soon discovered that recruiting and training new distributors is more fun, challenging, and rewarding than most other productive endeavors. Whatever we tried, we always ended up coming back to network marketing. Perhaps we're hooked because this industry involves such a variety of experiences. When we write, speak to groups, or work one-on-one -on -one with people on the telephone, we are involved in personal growth, marriage counseling, family values, company politics, integrity issues, small businesses, global businesses, and a variety of different cultures from all over the world. The personal goals and entrepreneurial dreams of every single person with whom we interact are of paramount importance to us. Given both of our backgrounds, it is proven impossible to find another profession with such a dramatic impact on so many people. We don't care how often you've heard about network marketing retirement. The truth is, our downline will always strive to duplicate us, and the last thing we want is a downline of retired leaders. Craig Bryson, a major international player in networking, has always warned leaders in this industry about the trickle-down effect. Any company that allows vesting or retirement without any monthly production requirements could eventually destroy itself from the top down. We concur. In fact, many of the top MLM companies offer 1% or 2% of total profits to be shared among its leaders or, in lieu of that, have created an addendum to their compensation plan that provides its leaders with the incentive to continue being productive. This is not only valuable for the leaders, but also for the downline distributors who tend to duplicate their uplines activity, or lack of it. Remember, whether you are speaking to groups of five or five hundred, don't dangle the retirement carrot in front of prospects without qualifying it. Better yet, focus on MLM's ability to bring about self-determination in their lives. Most people would be very pleased if they could just spend 10 or 20 hours each week at home with their families, hours they currently must spend in the office. Because we love what we do, it is sometimes difficult to know when work stops and play begins. Instead of 12-hour days, we now spend a few hours in productive work and the rest of the day in activities with our family, playing tennis, snow skiing, paragliding, and reading or writing books. Because of the freedom allotted us in this business, we are able to take time out to write or teach classes like the certification course we teach in America and Asia with Dr. Charles King. But our outside work is not limited to network marketing. Mark is currently writing a love story, and Renee is writing a self-help book based on her own life experiences. Mark is spending time developing a prison program, and Renee is the board chair of a homeless project. In other words, prospects should be told that they may look forward to unlimited freedom in a very few years, the freedom to do what they want, when they want to do it, while continuing to act as role models and support to their downline. Think of network marketing not as a career, but as a vehicle to help you do the things in life that really matter to you. This explanation is much more in line with what actually occurs in the lives of successful networkers. Erroneous view that no product or service need be sold. Network marketing is the orderly word-of-mouth distribution of products and services directly from the producer to the consumer. 
As products or services are purchased, the distributors responsible for those orders are compensated through multi levels in their organization. This is the definition of network marketing and why it is often referred to as multi level marketing. With this as the very basis of our industry, we find it difficult to understand how anyone can stand before audiences and say, In our business, you sell zero products. All you need to do is present the compensation plan and sign people up. Of all the false expectations created, this one is the most inaccurate because it denies the very essence of our business and makes government regulators suspicious of the industry. We understand why some well intentioned leaders say this, but it doesn't make it any less hurtful to our industry. Network marketing is often avoided by great prospects who fear that they will have to peddle products, lots of them, perhaps even door to door. Some men and women worry that they will actually become door to door cosmetic salespeople. To offset that erroneous notion, many aggressive leaders will suggest that new prospects need not sell anything. The truth is this network marketing is about a lot of people using and sharing a little bit of product. For the system to work, each of us must do our part. Our home should be filled with our products and services. To novices, we teach a battle cry just get ten. After personally using the products or services, we insist that our new frontline distributors begin by finding ten customers among their immediate family and close circle of friends. That's all, just ten. Everyone should be responsible for finding ten legitimate retail customers before building a sizable network organization. It doesn't take months to do this. It can be dealt with in a matter of days. But it must be done before they are ready to begin the more dramatic and lucrative part of the business, recruiting others who will do the same. Simple math makes it easy to understand the importance of each person creating product movement. If you sign up without ordering or sharing the products with others, you have created zero volume. Duplicate your process and sponsor a hundred people, who in turn each sponsor a hundred people. And you can brag to everyone that you have 10,000 people in your organization. The downside is that if they all duplicated your effort, 10,000 times zero is still zero. There are two kinds of product movement that are up to each of us personal use and customer orders. Based on your company's compensation plan, we encourage you to set specific goals and duplicate those throughout your organization. For example, We encourage our distributors to strive for $500 a month of personal sales volume. That includes the personal use of the distributor's immediate family and customer orders from the rest of their family and friends. For those men and women who are completely business oriented and simply can't envision conducting product demonstrations and clinics, here is what we suggest. Once you have begun using the products and or services yourself and have found your 10 customers, Put all of your energy into prospecting for business builders. As you sit down with small groups of prospects to show them the business presentation, you will inevitably have people who don't sign up to become business builders. However, they may be interested in the products or services your company offers. Without having gone out of your way or exerted extra energy, you simply service those people as retail consumers. Others will sign up interested only in getting the products at wholesale. Instead of joining Sam's Club or Costco and paying an annual membership fee, busy consumers are learning that through our industry, their products and services can be delivered to them directly. Teach your people who are resistant to product sales how easy it is to create customers out of those prospects who come to the recruiting meetings but decide not to participate in the business. This method appeals to executives and other business people who are intimidated by the fear that they will lose their identity as professionals and be looked upon by their peers as product peddlers or door to door salespeople. That's the honest way to address this problem, instead of creating the false expectation that no products or services need be purchased in our business. Mistaken belief that success can be achieved exclusively through retail sales. Steve and Jeanette Back from Portland, Oregon joined the world of network marketing with no prior business experience. 
Both were scholar athletes. Steve played professional football with the Detroit Lions for five years, and Jeanette still teaches peak performance aerobics. As they explain, the attraction for us was big money and free time. We embraced the product line wholeheartedly, but made the fatal mistake in the beginning of not seeking out upline mentors who had previous success in the business. We built a retail base of more than 100 customers and looked at our check after one year in the business and said, There's got to be a better way. There was. Our new focus was on duplication, keeping it simple, and constantly adding new recruits to the pipeline. Once we instilled these principles into our personal business, it was easy to teach others. When you stay busy looking for people who are at the right place and time in their lives, you don't worry about the ones who say no. Today, our life works. We've replaced our NFL income and, more importantly, our time is our own. So many people come into this business hearing about the upside potential and believing that all they have to do is sell some products to get to the big money. Not true. Ours is a business of each of us doing our little part of moving products or services. As with Steve and Jeanette, the money comes once you successfully recruit a large downline and duplicate that process. The average person will not be responsive to hype. People today are much more sophisticated than they were two or three decades ago. We've all been bombarded with millions of slick Madison Avenue advertising campaigns before we reach adolescence. By the time we reach maturity, we've seen our share of carnival barkers, sales professionals, and pushy, arrogant marketing reps. A 20-year-old today is more jaded and cynical than a 60-year-old in 1940. The very last thing people want is a high-pressure pitch on an MLM opportunity. Most people today can smell a rat the minute it emerges and can easily see through lies and fabrication. Our business already seems too good to be true. There's absolutely no reason to attempt to make it even better with false statements about exaggerated income, early retirement, or zero sales. We suspect that most professionals avoid our industry because it doesn't make sense that an ordinary person with only a high school degree can become a millionaire in three years with virtually no risk and no capital. When a thinking person is exposed for the very first time to network marketing by a competent leader who simply articulates the facts honestly, one of two things will occur. Either that prospect will walk away shaking her head in total disbelief, or she'll lose sleep for a week from the excitement of our potential earnings and lifestyle. No one need ever exaggerate nor falsely explain our industry again. The facts are sufficient in and of themselves. Think for just a moment about how preposterous these facts must seem to a prospect who knows very little, if anything, about our industry. Although we all say it in a multitude of diverse ways, here's essentially what we are presenting to people. We are asking them, first of all, to believe that network marketing is much more lucrative than most franchises, yet to begin it costs less than $100 or $200. If the owner of a great franchise like McDonald's earns more than $200,000 a year after having invested $1 million in the franchise, how on earth does an MLM distributor earn $200,000 a month on an investment of a couple hundred dollars? It doesn't compute. The franchise owner has to acquire property and build a large structure, but the network distributor works at home. The franchise owner pays out $10,000 a week to employees. The network marketer needs no employees. For the first six years, the franchise owner is nothing more than a shift change supervisor for a bunch of pimply-faced teenagers before he breaks even. In half that time, the multi-level marketer is working 25-hour weeks and thoroughly enjoying her life. We could go on and on ad infinitum because the life of a successful network marketer seems preferable to the life of anyone in traditional business. You get the point. MLM seems too good to be true already. There is simply no need for hyperbole. We urge you to present this business opportunity honestly and professionally. False expectations can literally ruin would-be great distributors. 
If people are led to believe falsehoods, once they figure out the truth, they quit. We've actually seen people quit while earning over $10,000 a month because someone had filled them with the false notion that they should be earning three times that amount. It sounds ridiculous, but it's absolutely true. This is the only business in the world in which former blue-collar workers can earn more each month than some pediatric cardiologists do in a year. So why tell folks they can do that in four months? Four years would satisfy most people. Nothing works better to convince a person to join our industry than the following honest dialogue following your presentation. You know, I think you and your wife would make remarkable partners in this home-based business, and I don't want you to go out of here today with false expectations. So please remember my closing comments. This is the most lucrative and fun profession in the world, but it's also the hardest work you'll ever do. This isn't like a lottery, and it's certainly no get-rich-quick scheme. But if you're willing to put in long hours and long days for just a few years, you could end up earning over $100,000 a month and enjoying all the free time you've ever imagined. I say it's tough because you may have to prospect a lot of people to find just one who's willing to work. But remember, one good frontline distributor can easily earn you $50,000 a month or more. Your prospects will appreciate your honesty, and you'll never be accused of creating false expectations. Yale-educated lawyer Ray Faltinsky, our good friend and co-founder of a major network marketing company, once told us that, by far, the majority of lawsuits and regulatory hand-slapping that has occurred throughout our industry's history has most often resulted from exaggerated claims about income and products. For our children's sake, let's join together and stop these exaggerations, which could pose a significant threat to our industry's longevity. Besides, if we just tell the truth, it already sounds too good to be true. Summary Don't be misled by false expectations. Success in network marketing takes hard work and persistence. There is no one to whom we could not present the MLM opportunity as a chance for success, but be cautious to distinguish between the fact that while everyone can, not everyone will. Along with references to the oversized checks, distributors will also want to discuss the amount of effort required in MLM. The more honest we are about the hard work required to succeed, the less attrition we will have, and the more respect we will build for the industry. Whether in a breakaway, a unilevel, a matrix, or a binary plan, the greater the number of personally sponsored distributors, the larger the income. Network marketing is the great equalizer in which former blue-collar workers are allowed to compete financially with doctors and corporate CEOs. With respect to the time it takes to do this business, set realistic goals based on real achievements of upline distributors or average earnings published by your company. Part-time effort will virtually never produce full-time results. There is nothing wrong with telling people the uppermost possibilities in this business, but there is no need to exaggerate because the truth is plenty remarkable in itself. As you bring others into this business, support them without promising that you will do it all for them. Networking is friends telling friends, and it simply won't work unless you are willing to share your enthusiasm with your friends personally. There is no better way to get started in the business than to just do it. Set up your first home meeting and begin. In network marketing, retirement means that we can ease up dramatically, no longer needing to spend our lives prospecting in order to achieve wealth and independence, while still finding an appropriate means of sustaining our support to those who depend on our accessibility. Think of networking not as a career, but as a vehicle to help you do the things in life that really matter. Simply defined, network marketing is the word-of-mouth distribution of products and services for which distributors who are responsible for those orders are compensated throughout multi-levels in their organization.
Even the most serious business builders are responsible for creating a small customer base, but you will not earn the big money by merely retailing products. Network marketing is about a lot of people using and sharing a little bit of product. Once you have built a customer base, the rest of your focus can be dedicated to building your organization by duplicating your upline mentor system and teaching others to do the same. Additional customers and wholesale buyers will inevitably come to you as a byproduct of your business presentations. Network marketing is much more lucrative than most franchises, yet is only a fraction of the investment, with no building, no employees, and no time spent away from home. False expectations can literally ruin would-be great distributors and destroy the credibility of the entire network marketing industry. Be honest and professional when you present network marketing as a business opportunity and help put an end to the exaggerations that could pose a significant threat to the health and longevity of our industry.